Hello, and welcome to today's Fluidime FAS Friday session. My name is Andrew Draghi, a North American mass cytometry field application scientist based here in Connecticut. I'm here today with my colleague, Wendell Smith, who is the senior field application scientist specialized in proteomics and resides in Southern California. We will be taking your questions in about 10 minutes or so. Uh, please enter your questions into the question box at any time during the presentation, and we will answer them during the Q&A session. In the meantime, we will start by highlighting the use of mass cytometry and imaging mass cytometry in checkpoint inhibitor studies. Profiling the human immune system is a key application used in translational and clinical research to look for biomarkers of disease or response to therapy. It is essential in driving the search for more effective treatments for almost any disease, including cancer, autoimmune diseases, or infectious disease. Fluidime is well aware of many analytic challenges faced when studying immune-mediated diseases and the complexity of the immune response in health and disease. Challenges for these types of studies can include limited and precious samples, longitudinal data comparisons, cost-effective and efficient analysis, incorporating new findings into ongoing studies, and the ability to find the unexpected. Mass cytometry and imaging mass cytometry can address these challenges through the use of high-dimensional comprehensive panels, which allow the most information to be derived from precious samples. The use of mass cytometry to study the effects of immunotherapies targeting checkpoint inhibitors like CTLA-4 and PD-1 have been on the rise, providing insights into the mechanisms involved in generating anti-tumor responses. Mass cytometric profiling and characterization can be performed on cells isolated from peripheral blood or the tumor itself, either at baseline or during the course of treatment to help uncover novel or rare cell subsets, define biomarkers or immune signatures relating to drug response, stratify patients into certain risk groups, as well as potentially help predict clinical response to therapy. Let's take a look at some papers that investigate the immune response to checkpoint inhibitor therapies using mass cytometry and imaging mass cytometry. In this paper from Jim Allison's lab at MD Anderson Cancer Center, mass cytometry enabled comprehensive characterization of checkpoint blockade mechanisms in mouse tumor models and also human melanomas. They found that anti-PD-1 and anti-CTLA-4 utilize distinct cellular mechanisms. Both anti-PD-1 and anti-CTLA-4 target subsets of exhausted-like CD8 T cells. However, CTLA-4 blockade can also induce expansion of ICOS-positive Th1-like CD4 T cells. Lastly, the authors also found that T cell response responses to different tumor models are fundamentally similar. In another paper from the Allison Group published in 2019, distinct cellular, cellular responses to combination anti-CTLA-4 plus anti-PD-1 checkpoint blockade were identified. Mass cytometry was chosen as the sole method to investigate cellular responses to either dual immunotherapy or monotherapy. Murine tumors and peripheral blood from melanoma patients were assessed with 40 plus marker Cytoff panels. Metaclustering identified 14 tumor infiltrating T cell subsets differing in frequency between both mono and dual immunotherapy conditions. Combination therapy and anti-CTLA-4 therapy, but not anti-PD-1 therapy, were found to elicit a switch from expansion of exhausted CD8 T cells to that of an expansion of activated effector CD8 T cells. In this paper from Buchard Beecher's lab at the University of Zurich, 
Three panels consisting of 30 plus markers enabled in-depth characterization of immune cells from whole blood of patients with metastatic melanoma before and after anti-PD-1 immunotherapy. The authors identified immune cell subsets that could be predictive of response to immunotherapy. In particular, the frequency of classical CD14 positive, CD16 negative monocytes with migration and activation marker expression may be a strong predictor of response to therapy. Additionally, T cell activation status and frequency of T cell subpopulations were also altered in responses in responders during anti PD1 treatment. In this paper by John Wary's lab at the University of Pennsylvania, they used blood-based immune profiling to reveal pharmacodynamic changes in the response to anti-PD-1 therapy in patients with advanced melanoma. The clinical response correlated to the ratio of the reinvigorated exhausted T cells to that of tumor burden. The identification of these rare circulating exhausted T cells in the blood may therefore help predict clinical response to anti-PD-1 therapy in the future. This paper from Evan Noel's lab, where he was at the Singapore Immuno Immunology Network, highlights the use of mass cytometry to characterize neoantigen-specific CD8 T cells in tumor-bearing mice following checkpoint blockade with anti-CTLA-4 or anti-PD-1. A broad range of predicted candidate tumor antigens was comprehensively screened using CYTOF approach with multiplex tetramer staining across multiple tissues. They showed that immunotherapy can alter the frequency and the phenotype of tumor infiltrating neoantigen specific T cells, but not that of the peripheral T cells. This framework is applicable for identifying tumor neoantigens or profiling antiviral T cell responses. In addition to using cells in suspension, Checkpoint inhibitor studies have looked at tumor microenvironment using imaging mass cytometry. Here in the Nishikawa lab at the National Cancer Center of Japan, they used imaging mass cytometry on the Hyperion imaging system to understand the spatial distribution of PD-1 positive, CD8 positive T cells in the biliary tract or BTC cancer biliary tract cancer. While disaggregating biliary tract tum tumor tissue showed that high levels of CD8 PD-1 T cells correlate with smaller tumor size, the spatial relationship of these cells to tumor cells was unknown. Here as seen in this representative IMC images, PD-1 positive, CD8 positive, TILs were found inside the tumor boundary in patients with a high number of this cell type, indicating that patients with early stage BTC may respond to immune checkpoint therapy blockade. Taken together, these findings reveal potential efficacy of immune checkpoint blockades against early stage biliary tract cancer. This slide shows a report from the Annals of Internal Medicine released last week. The authors used an 18 marker imaging mass cytometry panel to enable an unbiased exploratory approach to assess immune infiltration into lung tissue from two COVID-19 patients, one who died of cardiac arrest and one who died from pneumonia complications. Differences were noted in the immune patterns of infiltrating CD4 and CD8 T cells, NK cells, and macrophages in a single section of lung tissue from each patient. Recruitment of aberrant CD4 RA positive T cells is an immunological feature of COVID-19. Once bacterial pneumonia occurs, some phagocytes recruited by CD4 T cells begin to play a significant role in lung injury. 
While not directly related to checkpoint inhibitor studies, and in light of recent events surrounding the pandemic, I included this study to demonstrate the power profile and visualize cell changes that occur during the course of disease and potentially during or after therapeutic drug treatment. In future studies, additional markers could be added to this panel to examine T cell exhaustion and even provide insight into how drugs poised to treat COVID-19 are efficacious or efficacious. Thank you for your attention. We will now be happy to answer your questions. Please enter your questions into the question box and we will try to get to them as many as we can. For those that we can't answer during this webinar, questions will be forwarded to your regional field application specialist for follow-up. Hi, my name is Wendell Smith. Uh, I'll be the moderator of the questions uh, posed today. Uh, and I'd like to start with the question that's come in uh, for Hyperion use. Uh, the question is, how do you compare the results obtained from different software for IMC analysis? And are they consistent? Um, the answer to that question uh, is uh, difficult because there's never really been a direct comparison between different softwares, uh, whether it's free or the paid models. Uh, all the tools have their advantages and limitations. And it's sort of up to you to determine which tool works best for your specific question. I would say that you need to uh, consider uh, first what the question is that you'd like to answer and how the algorithm is uh, designed to to work. That's a, that's a much more complex answer than I mean, the answer that's much more complex than I'm able to state here. So what I would say is when you get to the point where you know what the question is, maybe talk to your local FAS for imaging and help them determine, help you to determine which uh, program to use and which algorithm it utilizes that uh, best address your question with your tissue sample. We have a question here for Andy for Helios. Uh, the question is, my dissociated mouse tumor sample barcoding is yielding only 30% and many events are unassigned. What can I do to prevent this? Excellent question. Um, in order to best help you, I think uh, you need to like, look at your files and look at your data and uh, maybe we can recover some of that. Important things to consider are your cell quality. Uh, your viability uh, may be low and that could be um, imparting its effects on your ability to recover events. Um, your viability should be better than that of 85%. Um, dead cells and debris can soak up, you know, your barcoding um, and also your antibodies. And, uh, you know, if you're not staining at least one to three million total cells, um, you know, that could be one of the reasons why you're failing to, uh, you know, achieve the, uh, the vent thresholds you need. Um, you know, make sure that your cells are uh, thoroughly resuspended uh, prior to fixing cells. Um, this could cut down on some aggregations. Um, give you a better staining uh, properties uh, and may improve uh, your your you know your ability to um, recover these events and assign them. Um, best best thing for you to do is to um, reach out to Fluidime and uh, get in touch with your FAS, um, and we can do some troubleshooting and uh, you know probably recover some of your data. Okay, we have another question for for Andy uh, for Helios. Are there alternatives to live cell barcoding besides using CD45? Yeah, good question. Absolutely. Um, yeah, you can use uh, a few other markers, and there's a paper available at Hartman et al. Uh, it came out recently, and they use uh, CD298 and also beta 2 microglobin. Um, and this will be, uh, you know, it's, it's a surface stain for human cells, so this is for human work. Um, and the advantages of this method is not restricted just to immune cells. So you can, you know, pull stem cells, tumor cells, et cetera, and use this methodology. Um, if you're doing like a tumor prep, um, this is something you can use. Um, and so, uh, so yeah, there are alternatives to using uh, CD45. Again, you could also reach out to your FAS and uh, we, we can, uh, you know, provide you that reference or um, maybe possibly address other uh, markers you want to use. 
Okay, it looks like we have one last question. This is for Hyperion. Uh, so the question is, I have tissue that is coming in soon uh, and need to know how to proceed if I don't have access to an IMC yet. What do you recommend? Uh, I have, a lot of the labs uh, out there are just starting to come back online due to the break that we've all experienced due to COVID-19. Uh, and in this particular case, what I would say is if you have access to your antibodies, then I would stain the slide. Uh, that slide should be stable for at least six months, possibly much longer. Um, just stored it in the dark at room temperature. Of course, there are other storage conditions that you can you can uh, explore if you don't need to go uh, long term or longer than that. Uh, but that should buy you enough time for your lab to get back up to speed, uh, giving you the time to process that sample. You shouldn't see very much uh, drop in in quality from a fresh. As long as it's fresh stain is stained right away, once it's stained and dried, it should be stable for at least uh, six months. We don't have any other questions from the audience uh, at this time. So I'm going to turn it back over to Andy, uh, unless a question comes in uh, in the next minute or so. Andy, you can wrap up yes. now, please. Yes, thank you. Uh, um, from this slide, you can see uh, there's a couple ways to get in touch um, with your FAS and arrange office hours, phone conversation, Skype demo. Um, and the two emails that you can reach out to us at are support.northamerica at fluidine.com. Um, uh, across the pond in Europe, you can reach out to eu.support at fluidine.com. Um, and from there, you will be put in touch with your area's FAS, um, and they can help address uh, your questions specifically and personally. Um, we also have other upcoming uh, live sessions that you can take advantage of um, if it's of particular interest. Um, so from what you can see here, we have events, you know, in June and July, um, and uh, you, we have everything from top eight reasons to use mass cytometry, um, intro to mass cytometry, and of course, introduction to imaging mass cytometry. You can register at fluidime.com slash events. Um, and here's another another slide showing some uh, some even more uh, live sessions. We have, of course, the uh, FAS Friday Q and A um, going through August, and uh, we also have deep immune profiling, the uh, MDIPA MDIPA system that's coming up on June 24th. Um, again, you can register for these events at fluidime.com/events. And I'll just bring you back to this slide here. If there's no more questions, um, the uh, remember support.northamerica at fluidime.com or eu.support at fluidime.com. Are there any more questions for today's session? Uh, we'll be closing out uh, in the next few minutes. No, nope, I think that's it, Andrew. I mean, Andrew. All right. Well, thank you very much for your attendance um, and your attention and your questions today. And again, uh, please feel free to reach out to us at Fluid. I'm if you need a, need a follow-up question answered. Thank you very much and have a wonderful weekend.